Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 6 and I'm going to discuss the Nabla operator. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. So this will be part 1 of 2 parts on the Nabla. And part 1 is obviously going to be video 6, but part 2 is going to be video number 11. As it stands, it's video 11. So let's start. First of all I ask you, what is an operator? Uh, if you're doing quantum at the same time as this, you'll be kind of thinking I know I've heard the phrase and it scares the life out of me, what's an operator? Well, I'd like to carry me down by saying you know plenty of operators. You know loads of them, you use them all the time. This one here, this operator is called the addition operator. When you apply it between two numbers A and B, what you get is their sum. So it operates on A and B and calculates their sum. This is the subtraction operator. If you apply it between A and B, what you get is their difference. This is the multiplication operator. If you apply it between two numbers, A and B, of course you get your, their product. And of course then you have the division operator and so on. But are there any other operators, maybe more complicated operators? Well, of course there are. You might have the integral operator, uh, which probably looks like that. You might have your differential operator, which calculates the derivative of something. Um, what else? So there, there are loads more. Now the point is this, sorry, one of the points is this, that an operator an operator is meaningless. An operator is meaningless unless it's operating. Now, like, what does that mean? Uh, A T I N G. Well, think about it. If I just if I just wrote down my 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 addition operator, well, then if you saw that in a piece of paper, you'd be like, hmm, that means nothing. If you saw your if you saw a multiplication operator, you'd say, well, that means nothing. So it should, of course, let's just extend it to other operators. But if you see these, that means nothing. So the Nabla operator, which I'll introduce in a minute, means nothing on its own. All right? It has to be operating before it actually means something. So that's the what is an operator part complete. Next, let's define the Nabla operator. The reason it's called the Nabla is because of the symbol. This is the symbol for the Nabla. It's kind of like an ups upside down delta. Now, for for you know, for lots of reasons, I'm going to call it a vector. It might have some people say, well, then unless it's actually operating, it's not a vector. It doesn't become a vector until it's operating. I'm not going to make that distinction. We're talking physics here. We're not talking mathematics. So we're using it as a tool rather than trying to be very rigorous. I suppose any mathematicians watching this won't be happy to hear that statement. But that's the way I'm going to look at it for the moment. So this is our Nabla operator, and it is the following. What it does is it calculates. Uh, it it's calculates the rate of change of your function with respect to x in the i-hat direction, with respect to y in the j-hat direction, and with respect to z in the k-hat direction. Now, I'm sure you've seen a way, another way of writing these, these vector components. You can do it in this kind of bracket notation. So you might have del del x, del del y, and del del z, where the unit vector components are just implied. Now, just in case you haven't seen it before, i hat is sometimes written as x hat, y hat is sometimes written as uh, or j hat is sometimes written as y hat, and k hat is sometimes written as z hat. All right, but I like i j and k, and I'm going to stick with them. To be honest. Now, what can you do with it? Well, with the addition operator, there's only some, there's only one thing you can do. You can add. With the subtraction operator, there's only one thing you can do. You can uh, you can uh, subtract, but with the Nabla operator, there are actually a number of things you can do. And the reason there are is because it's a vector. I'm going to, like I said, for the moment, I'm going to call it a vector. And there are different things we can do with vectors. We can take the scalar product. We can take these, the scalar product, and we can take the vector product. Or, let's say, we can also just operate. I don't know how else I'm going to write that. So, I'm saying that there are three things we can do. Okay, now, sorry, there's supposed to be two. There are three things which we can do. Because this is, an, it is a vector operator, there are three things we can do. With any vector, there are three things we can do with it. Operate simply or multiply by it. You can multiply it by a scalar, which is the same as operating. We'll see in a minute. We can take the scalar product or take the vector product. So this, I suppose, I don't know, like if you, if you want to think, you can think about this as multiplying or multiplication. Now, it's not. But if you want to draw the analogy between normal vector operations, you have the scalar product, the vector product, and then multiplication by some other vector or a scalar. All right. 
So let's see what they look like. So the dot product, we need to think actually first of all about what these what these things do. Well if you if you multiply if you multiply a vector by a scalar, you get a vector. We know that, okay? If we take the scalar product, also known as the dot product, well of course you get back a scalar. But if you take the vector product or the cross product, what you get back is a vector. And that's important. This is very important. In actual fact, you need to know that. So we're going to draw the analogy here between taking the, we'll say, I suppose, the multipl multiplying, take the scalar and taking the, the vector product with our lab operator. So let's say we have a function f, and I just, or let's say we have, um, I don't know, a scalar a, and I just operate on our function a, we'll say. So there's, that's, we'll say, this is equivalent to our multiplication. And I'm going to talk about this actually in the next video. I'm going to call it the gradient. Now, I'm not being rigorous here, but this is actually incorrect. But let's call it, but it is called the gradient. There's a bit more to it. Now, in actual fact, this gives you back a vector, just like in, just mu like multiplying a vector by a, by a scalar, you get back a, a vector. So I'm going to give, I'm going to say get back a vector. Well, you can take the dot product. So this time, let's take the dot product with, our, with a vector a. Well, then you're going to get back a scalar. So this is going to get back, this is going to get back a vector. And we're going to call this the divergence. I'll talk about these later on, of course. And finally, we, we said we could take the vector product. And this is going to give us back a vector. And we call it the, um, the curl. And don't worry about why we call it the gradient divergence and curl, or gradative curl, as it's sometimes called. But that's all I've got to say about the NABLA. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorial.com. Thank you.